Bud Spencer and Terence Hill are back. Well, sort of, in their newest video game adventure, Slaps and Beans 2. Don't know what on earth I'm going on about? Don't worry, let me catch you up to speed. Before I give you a history lesson on this flatulent sounding twosome, do yourself a solid and slap the subscribe button so you don't miss the review of your next favorite indie game. While you're down there, we'd be thrilled to catch you over at patreon.com slash I dream of indie games, where you can support independent games media while also netting yourself some sweet perks like exclusive live streams, early and ad free content, and Discord access. Your community is waiting. Don't feel bad if you're unfamiliar with Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill because playing Slaps and Beans was my introduction to this dynamic duo. First of all, Spencer and Hill are Italian and those are not their birth names. Second, they starred in countless action comedy flicks and spaghetti westerns from around 1967 to 1994. That's a lot of years and they were filled with a lot of films. Then came Slaps and Beans in 2017. The first game in this series released just about a year after the death of Bud Spencer. This title brought the now infamous character actors to life in a whole new light, featuring over-the-top brawling action, mini games, and one of the most absurd soundtracks you'll ever hear in a video game. This is the TLDR version, but you get the gist of how this sequel came to be. Now that you're current, let's break down Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill Slaps and Beans 2. If it wasn't already already obvious, this is a pretty direct sequel to its predecessor. You pick up where you left off, shipwrecked somewhere off the coast of Africa, with only a few spare cans of beans that don't last you a particularly long time. You'll join the hapless pair and their boundless hijinks as they try to make their way back home and fail in spectacular spectacular fashion. Slaps and Beans 2 plays as a side-scrolling brawler, which can be enjoyed either single player or co-op with three difficulty levels, easy, normal, and hard. I opted for normal, which didn't prove to be too strenuous. If you don't have a co-op partner, or if you just prefer playing alone, you'll be able to swap back and forth between Bud and Terrence at will. Both characters have specific abilities and strengths that will need to be used in order for you to make progress, so sticking with one character through throughout is not really possible. For example, Spencer is more agile and can climb larger stacks of boxes, while Bud is stronger and can punch through crates with ease. You'll need to use both of these abilities to successfully navigate a room to proceed to the next destination. Combat for each character consists of a heavy and fast attack, as well as a grab slash throw option and a block. You can run holding down the right trigger if you're playing on a controller. You can also hold down the attacks for a power up and press the heavy and fast attacks at the same time to produce some pretty hilarious maneuvers. Absolutely nothing about this game is serious, and that includes the fighting style. Enemies can be tossed around like ragdolls or donkey kicked till your heart's content. Should one of the duo take a bit too much damage, they can be revived by their counterpart, and there are plenty of health items to collect such as hamburgers and, you guessed it, beans to provide additional pep. There are also a ton of interactive objects within the environments that can be picked up or used against your enemies in dozens of comical ways. Each level provides a decent amount of variety when it comes to content. You'll have to read or listen through your fair share of plot points, plenty of brawling to perform, smattering of minigames and a boss battle to contend with, none of which take a particularly long time to complete. The minigames are an absolute fever dream, ranging from rhythm-based food eating contests to triathlons and card games. Truly, there is a little of everything. These minigames are also playable outside of the story mode in a party mode, where they can be enjoyed with up to four players. A novel enough concept, but I can't really imagine convincing three friends to allow me to subject them to the choir minigame for more than five minutes. The boss battles can be pretty annoying, as you typically can't go in arm swinging and expect to slap them to their death. Many require a bit more strategy, like dodging an oncoming bulldozer or making an evil lackey harm his own boss. And that's really all there is to slaps and beans. My biggest gripe was the actual brawler aspect isn't all that fun. 
A lot of the fights occur in one small space that is attacked by waves of enemies without a clear indication of when the fight will actually end. Once the area is cleared, you proceed to the next destination, but it doesn't really feel like there's enough movement within a level before you're thrown into the next text dump or minigame. There were times that I questioned whether the game had glitched because of the seemingly endless stream of enemies in a single area. While some of the minigames are amusing, they don't add a ton of value to the overall experience, so I could see the game getting old after a single playthrough. It's just not something I would be eager to go back into. Graphically, Slaps and Beans 2 stays true to its arcade brawler roots with some pretty detailed pixel art environments and uncanny sprites that definitely bear resemblance to the infamous actors. By far the strongest point of Slaps and Beans 2 is the soundtrack. These are some of the most off-the-wall, over-the-top tracks I've ever witnessed in a video game, and I have played a lot of video games. Most tracks have a hard to place island vibe featuring some bizarre lyrics and vocal sounds, horns, shakers, and woodwinds. By contrast, one very distinct difference between the original Brawler and its successor is the addition of voice acting. Unfortunately, this was not a welcome change. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I would much rather a game exclude voice acting entirely over adding bad budget voice acting. Let's just say they should have saved their money and went without in this case. I would have rather used my imagination. Another thing that drove me absolutely bonkers were the drum kit sound effects that would play as you brawl. It was kind of funny and novel the first few times, but after a while I wanted to toss my controller at the next cymbal crash. If you're going to have a repetitive sound in your video game, I implore you to make it something other than offbeat drum sounds. As a total package, Slaps and Beans 2 doesn't quite slap. Weirdly, this wasn't the first brawler I've played about slapping, but unfortunately it wasn't my favorite one either. There is something here for fans of the original Slaps and Beans and die-hard Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill admirers, but for everyone else, there is an eclectic brawler with style points and not much else.